Yo, yo, welcome back to the Audio Theory Podcast. If you're new to the channel, please hit the like button as well as the subscribe button. What's good, Danny? How have you been? I've been good, dude. Been really good. Had a nice uh, weekend. Uh, our Basel week in uh, Miami. So I took part of the festivities on Sunday. I feel weird doing this though, because like I listened to like the flagrant podcast. Yeah. And he had a whole rant of that. I was like, yeah. oh, this motherfucker is stealing my material, but <laughs> it's all good. The funny thing is, it's the first Our Basel, bro. Like, cause I've been doing this now for five years in a row. And this is the first one, bro. Like, I didn't feel any kind of FOMO. Like in the past, I would be like seeing these guys like at the different parties and and like different events and you're like oh dude how the fuck did like 21 savages show up randomly and i'm just like bro like who cares bro like yeah yeah you know what i mean maybe because like i know like i, I don't want to like drive this shit's like 55 minutes away that's like a two hour round trip i'm like bro i don't want to do that shit on a thursday you know what i mean and i don't want to mm -hmm. take time off work when i already have other shit planned but i do back in the day i think my first two art basels bro i got a fucking like liver damage from drink or sorry kidney damage from drinking so much like Shit. that like in the hospital bro so like yeah but this was still cool we saw um selection uh they had a full set on sunday uh, if anyone hasn't seen them it's, yeah, it's my third time seeing them this year um so shout out to joe k and that whole crew because it's a great show it's weird though because it's i still met up with a few friends and like selection is such like the perfect like music where you still want to like talk to people but then you'll stop the conversation to be like, oh, dude, he's fucking killing this set right now. Yeah. But they kind of go back to your conversation. Whereas, like, if it's, like, push a T, you're like, bro, I can't, like, don't even talk to me right now. You know what I think? So it's, like, right. it's always, like, the best of, like, both worlds as far as, like, a social gathering but still being entertained by a, a live performance. So Dope. besides that, dude, life's, life's been good, man. Uh, just getting ready to uh, head to New York next week um, to check out some uh, wedding venues, bro. How about you, man? How's life been? Nice. Life's been good. Um... The past few days haven't been super eventful other than the fact that one i have i finally completed a song that okay i i've been working on for a couple weeks now it's kind of interesting it it's always it always works out when i'm not trying to write a song um so this dude i guess he heard me on rap nation or somewhere and he's a producer he reached out to me a long time ago i think a couple months ago um but I wasn't, I think at that time I was kind of like off Instagram. I wasn't like really trying to make music at that time. So I uh, didn't really follow through with his messages. But then gotcha. past month or so, uh, checked out a few of his beats. One of them I like immediately fell in love with. And then I wasn't necessarily going to make any promises that I would do anything with it. But then I found myself writing the hook, which I had mm -hmm. wrote, written to another song. It wasn't even the hook. It was just the like the first part of the verse and i was like oh shit this so he he sends you a full beat without even like any like uh like agreement in place yeah and a lot of producers will do that i mean sometimes they'll tag it with like their name on it so you can't straight up steal it but mm. in this digital era it's it's so easy to steal beats regardless i think outside of the putting the tag on the beat like producers are more concerned about just getting it out there and and making a name because the reality is like 99 percent of the rappers aren't gonna have a hit song from it sure. anyway so sure i think that's why they're more lenient with being like here just check out my shit and like maybe it'll work out yeah, yeah um, okay so yeah i wrote i ended up writing a hook that i fell in love with and then wrote the whole song so i just have to record that um but i'm really excited about this one in particular it's kind of like a a feel-good pop club song i guess if i had to compare it to similar artists kind of like um i don't know like an up-tempo feel-good track that like toy lanes or, or juice world or some shit might, okay. might make okay um, so are, you, like are you setting a, a timeline for yourself though like yo i gotta get this shit done before the year's up or whenever i'm trying to record that. it before i go to la uh which is next thursday so okay um I want to have it complete by then so that I can um, get it ready and stuff. But in terms of the release, that definitely won't happen until probably like mid to end end of January. Okay. Yep. So, but just the actual like you sitting down, putting the lyrics down, like that that part you want to get done, and then yeah. the editing of it and the marketing of yeah. it afterward. Yeah. Got gotcha, you. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. The, the but stuff this isn't the song that like you said came to you when you were in Korea, right? No. Uh, the one that came to me around that time was a, a different one. Um, 
which I do like, but this one I, I'm just like drawn to. So I want to get more. this one out. Yeah, yeah. Nice, dude. That's exciting. That's exciting. And then when do you uh, you say you go to New York? I'm oh, sorry, LA next week. Is that like a? Are you do you guys shut it down at your company for like a minute for the holidays, or like are you still like functioning to, and you like getting PTO? So we're like completely off basically from Christmas Eve up until January 3rd. So like the okay. day after like New Year's is observed. Um, but the week, like every single year, the week up until Christmas, like the 19th onward, the clients are pretty much gone anyway. So it's it's super quiet. Like I okay. probably will end up working like a couple hours a day realistically during that week, if anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because we're kind of at that stage. This week's has been a little bit crazy, but I feel like next week we're going to be fully in that, like, yeah, we're open. Yeah. But like, bro, like, take a day off, work half a yeah. day. Like, it's pretty much like if you're in the office or online, like, just dude, just like, let us know what you're doing. Like, yeah. Are you only working for a couple hours today? Are you working the whole day? Like, what? Right. Like, let us know. So we're not just like yeah. you know, pretending here, kind of a thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Everyone's been, been working from home since. The, since December started, like nobody's been in the office. Really? Yeah, they just said yeah, fuck. We it. have a we have an office home. day tomorrow, and then another office day next week. But we honestly just have like a, a bunch of events happening. Like we have our holiday party at like the Hard Rock Hotel, um, which is gonna be sick, dude. But it's funny, I can't attend it. But um, the funny thing is, the baby's performing afterwards at the oh, same shit. venue, and uh -huh. they told our our company, "Hey, listen, you guys are spending a lot of money." all of your employees can stay and watch him like for free kind of a uh -huh. thing right and dude so many people okay these are also older like people who maybe don't fuck with that kind of music but it's just funny that like if you told them hey a grammy award no a grammy nominated artist is going to be performing and you can watch it for free you would think they'd stay and yeah. everyone's like Nah, it's the wrong the baby. I like the other baby. Like I don't. I'm not gonna stay. I'm like, bro, get the fuck. Yeah. Like it's just so crazy how like he's fallen off. Like, cause I don't do. I feel like two years ago you could tell me, yo, I have a free show for you to watch the baby. I'm like, yeah, dude, that's fucking right. But like right. now everyone's just like, eh. And I don't think it's because of the music. It's just because of you know everything else, which is just like right, right. funny because it's like, dude, it's a free fucking show. Like, go, go. See. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I, there's a Especially lot of if you're already in the free. building. It's like, bro, yeah, there's yeah. no extra effort for you. Just stay. You know what right. I mean? like, yeah, that's wild to me. I 100% would stay to see him. I would say. I would just, I would support him, bro. Especially if a yeah. couple of songs came on that I like really liked from like two years ago. I'm like, bro, yeah. we, we have to stay here for this. But um, it's all good, man. But let's get into it. Let's get into it. We have a, a hard out in a bit. Our man's going to go see Wakanda forever. So I don't want to do any spoiler alerts for him. So. We'll discuss it on next week's pod if it lived up to the hype that I gave it. But um, I guess the biggest thing, man, like I really thought um, after the Lex interview and like all the interviews that he was doing, this being Ye, <clears throat> formerly known as Kanye West, I figured he would just go away for a minute, bro. Like just disappear and like, you know, let me get right with my mind or whatever. And it feels like, bro, he's like doubling and tripling and quadrupling down right now. And I guess the latest was um, also, I didn't even know Alex Jones still had a platform to even like talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, I thought same. he was like bankrupting <laughs> behind bars. Like I was like, oh shit, he's also around? Um, but I guess he was on Alex Jones' platform Infowars and was just, you know, kind of just talking about the same exact shit, but being very clear, almost unlike like other interviews, like, no, I I, I do hate, I don't, I don't think he said I hate Jews, but I do like Hitler and there's like a lot of aspects about like Nazi culture that I do agree with. And it's just like, bro, like, how did we get here? Kind of a thing, right? I don't know if you want to elaborate yeah. any more if I'm like missing things from the interview. No, I mean, I, I think that pretty much sums it up. Uh, I was pretty surprised too, that he he made it onto this platform and took it up a notch in terms of the, the rhetoric he was spewing. Um, I think the biggest thing that everyone's been talking about is it's just the fact that he he came across as like a nazi sympathizer mm -hmm. of some sort um basically saying he loves nazis the same way he loves everyone the same way he loves jews whatever um and i, I get what angle he was trying to go i think he was trying to go like the hyper christian route like super radical like forgive and love every human being because you don't have to love what they did or what they do but you can love them for you know the the innocent child they they once were when they were created on this planet or some shit like that 
Some but, shit, dude. A reach. But yeah, yeah it, it's a serious reach. And for that reason, like, I almost can't take it seriously. I, I And he just released the song today. And I, I just can't help but think he's just doing all this stuff on purpose to get a reaction. Uh, I don't know if that's his narcissi- narcissism or what, but he did the same shit with the White Lives Matter. Like, I don't even know if he gives a shit about the statement, but he knew it would piss people off. And you could literally say as an as a rebuttal to the public uh condemning yay he could say well like white lives do matter are you saying they don't and, and if you're like if, yeah, yeah yeah and if you're christian he's gonna be like well the bible says you're supposed to to love everyone right like jesus hung out with prostitutes or whatever yeah i feel like he's trying to go that route which to me is terrible terrible right because i wanted to ask you like how, like I'll, I'll jump in real quick and see like what my thoughts on it because my biggest thing is like i get what you're saying right like if we if we judge like that line, if we judge Malcolm X when he was like 10 years old or 13 years old, where he had a couple of cases, like then how can we ever learn to appreciate Malcolm X, you know, in his 20s and 30s that was actually doing ma- amazing things for, for black men throughout the, the, uh, the country. But my thing with like, there's also some people you can't give them the benefit of the doubt for, right? And I think Hitler, I think it's safe to say should fall in that category, bro. Like, yeah, it's one thing that like, I agree as a Christian, like, hey, everyone should be able to repent and be remorseful, you know what I mean? But when the acts are so heinous, bro, you can't be jumping in and being remorseful on their behalf, you know what I mean? Because I feel like in that moment and the moments leading up to Hitler no longer being here, he wasn't, it's not like he was like, oh, my bad, I fucked this up, like I was crazy. Like he was standing by that. So I think at some point, like, even I feel that, bro, like on a day-to-day basis, I don't know about you, like, whenever I see someone acting a certain way with me or even towards someone, like, I'm like, bro, everyone has a story. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't think your anger really is at me, bro. Like, I think you're just mad, and I'm gonna be like, I'm not, I do, I just had this on a work email, bro. This guy, like, really annoyed me. And I Same. was just like, you know what? Bro, let me breathe. I'll talk to him tomorrow. He's probably going through some shit. You know, it's not that, it's not that deep. But, bro, this is that deep. Like, this is very deep. And, like, mm-hmm. for you to go out of your way to be like, oh, but I love, I love this. Dude, we get it, bro. I think Hitler invented fucking, like, the Porsche and Volkswagen and all. Like, that's cool. But we can also just like the product and not, like, amplify the person who made it because that person also did fucking terrible things. You know what right. I mean? Like, me fucking having a Volkswagen in my driveway doesn't also mean to have a fucking Nazi flag in my, you know, in my house. Like it's mm-hmm. two different things. I feel like it's just like, it's really hard for me to understand like the, the point here. Like, right. like, what are you trying to like, dude, we really, you really kind of were hinting at this. So it's like, it's almost like he wants us to believe like, no, 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 I really am this terrible. And it's mm-hmm. just like, bro, why? Like, right. Like, yeah, why? there's no relevance for me. Uh, it, I don't understand why bringing Hitler into the conversation was necessary, regardless of if you admire certain products he might have created. And by the way, I I hear the microphone he didn't even create to begin with. But yeah, it's just it just seems extremely random. And I feel like he's obviously only bringing it up to rile up uh, the Jews that he's like, quote unquote, at war against. It'd be like if someone if I got in an argument with someone at work and like out of the blue, they were talking about how productive like slave masters were or some shit i'm like are you just trying to piss me off or like what the fuck does this have to do with anything with anything like Like, what are we achieving here with this it's my really like what are we achieving here with this so like besides us just being like bro he has to be crazy right like it's just that's just what it is like he has to just be crazy i don't think he is but man it's just weird bro it's just weird and then to, to your point like the music that came out tonight um Bro, honestly, I felt even uncomfortable liking it. Like, yeah. literally just hitting a little heart on a screen. I was like, I don't know, bro. I can't. I can't like this shit, bro. Yeah, and I yeah. didn't even finish the full two minutes. I was like, yo, bro, like, I don't even want to give this attention. Because in my mind, bro, like, if your actions are that crazy, like, I can't remove you from them. You know what I mean? Like, I just, like, it's just too, it's too close, right? This isn't like... Hmm. Dude, it's so funny because today we had a company wide meeting and the song leading up to it was like a Michael Jackson song, right? And bro, I love Michael, I listen to Michael Jackson all day in the house, but it's, it's whatever. But it's just funny in a, in a Fortune 500 company, 
you know, we're like, I made a, a joke on the side to like my uh, my other my other team members, like, so if we request R. Kelly next week, is that okay? Or is that not like <laughs> allowed in this society right now? So like, it's just, again, yeah. I know over time, we just like, we could remove the art, um, the artists from the other shit they do. But bro, this is like a week ago, two days ago. So yeah. like for you to drop a song and think that everyone's gonna be like, Oh, well, yeah, this, this song is fire. You know, listen to these bars. I'm like, bro, you are crazy, bro. Right. Because I just, I just, I don't get that. But also the song, like, it's not even like he dropped a, I don't know, a feel-good Christmas song or something. It was a song basically addressing him being the victim again and everyone's out to get him. And I, I just honestly, I feel like he's bored at this point and yeah. just needs a challenge. Like, he's driven by... The public being like fuck you yay you know you're crazy you don't know what you're doing and he he seems to not be able to make music anymore unless there's some big controversial moment he needs to address and yeah i don't understand why he needs to go to this extent in order to to find a creative outlet yeah no it's it's perplexing bro like just like i don't I don't understand it. It's it's tough to even try to like come up with the right sentences to even articulate what he's doing when I feel like he's not even doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's not even articulating like, yo, why are you doing this, bro? Like, why are you even right? There's so many things that like again, ugh, dude, like because you, you start under you start, it's almost like the the like at the peak of like Trumpism when like Trump was like running and like trying to run again uh, against Biden. Like you would see people on your timeline like not really say they support Trump, but like putting out content that you're like, bro, we we know what's up here, right? Yeah. And then like someone put out a, a not a meme, but a quote today that was like, no, don't live in a world where you feel like you have to like self censor yourself to you know really show who you are because you're getting mad at people who don't censor themselves, but really you're just mad at yourself. And I'm like, yeah, dude, maybe. But also, there should be shit you don't, you just don't say. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I think that's also true. You know what I mean, bro? Like, we can say that whoever is great at organizing things. But if that organization is the extermination of an entire race of people, probably shouldn't say that, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, like you just stay away from that shit. So, like, right. I don't get why people are like, no, but do I get his point of view? He's, he's not trying to say this. I'm like, bro, like, we have to stop, like, speaking for this man. Like, no, he's saying something and is not trying to back down from it. So at some point, then that's just who the fuck he is, bro. And like, mm -hmm. and then from that point, you have to decide what side of it you're on because the shit he's saying is wild, bro. And it's not going on like a month and a half of this, bro. Like since right. I left San Francisco pretty much, it's almost two months ago now that he's just nonstop. You think it's done and like a week later, it's a new interview for 45 minutes of him just like doubling down. And it's just like, bro, like what are we even doing now? Like this is right. just who you are then. Yeah. And I, I don't think it's going to stop. I think uh, if you weren't running for president, honestly, I don't think he would be doing any of this. And uh, I feel like at this point in time, he's he's just really looking to make the headlines over and over and make everyone else seem like, uh, I don't know, like a liberal cuck or something for wanting to cancel him for, you know, speaking his mind and technically, like, not saying anything that's that's necessarily incorrect but right. just enough to piss you off because no one wants to it'd be like saying uh jeffrey dahmer you know was very clever at what he did and you know <laughs> you're, telling, you're telling like the mothers and fathers of the victims this information is like even if they are clever criminals or clever evil people nobody wants to fucking hear that shit like go study and research that on your own and use it for good but don't uh publicize it in a way where you're you're idolizing them because then you're going to create i feel like he's giving he's empowering actual nazis who believe hitler did the right thing there's several videos of that kind of shit and i think at this point in time he uh yeah he's just really feeding off that energy for his campaign that i guess is gonna be full-blown in effect like a year from now which is wild though, dude, because even to that point about like him running, it's like, where are you getting like campaign money from, bro? Because I feel like that, it, like, I feel like the way the government is set up, it's like, 
if you are a lobbyist and if you donate to one of these campaigns, that information comes out. So like, you can't be like a major corporation backing him. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just gonna be like a joke where like a few states put him on the ballot, but like, is he really running? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so that, that just seems odd too. And then to your other point, which is, I just read this on like Bloomberg today. Um, bro, apparently there was like a, uh, like a January 6th, like the, like the, the, the overtaking of the Senate building we had here, like, uh, was it, was it last year or the year before? No, it was, um, it was two years ago, right? Yeah, it was two years I think ago. So. Yeah, dude, they almost had that in Germany this past, like these past two days. And like, and it was all like Nazi extremists. And luckily like the German police like got to them before this shit went down. But like, mm -hmm. to your point, like these kind of people do exist though. And I feel like him having that platform is just like them having someone to be like, see, we're not crazy. These people do do this, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, bro, like, and I don't, I don't even know if he understands like the weight of his work. You know what I mean? I think he just thinks he can just say whatever the fuck he wants and there's like zero consequences, bro, like zero. And then unfortunately, yeah. I mean, that's just not true. Right. I, mean, I think from his perspective too, he's probably, he probably feels like, you know, black people have gotten, have have dealt with hearing these sorts of things, whether it be slavery or, you know, being uh, accused of, you know, filling up the jails because we're, we're just violently, uh, inherently violent and things like that. And he's just like, fuck it. Like Jews deserve to feel a little pain. So let me just say this outlandish shit to, you know, rile people up. And he knows police people believe this stuff. People out there believe this stuff as well. Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate because, yeah, I don't think he really gives a shit about, you know, what some Nazi in, in Europe is doing no. on the streets. No, I think no, he no, just no. wants to get a bunch of retweets and eventually a bunch of votes from those sorts of people who, uh, who don't like cancel culture. You know, he's making Elon look crazy because he got banned from Twitter. So I think he's just out to, to do that too. Like, be like, see, Elon's, you know, not really for free speech. And, you know, all these social media companies and the government's out to, you know, suppress your voice. So vote for me. I feel like that's like yeah. his angle. That's, his, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, dude, your thoughts, this is a side note. It's still about Kanye, but side note. Your thoughts on his last tweet before he went off Twitter um, to say that Chris Paul banged his Kim Kardashian while they were together. I thought that was so random, but to me, it, it kind of, I don't know, it, it always reiterates this idea in my mind and theory. I think we talked about it, that like behind all the madness, it, like pussy is just somehow always. Yeah, yeah, it's about and, a girl. Everything's yeah. about a girl, bro. Like, Everything's it, about it. Doesn't matter if it's like a shooting at a mall. It doesn't matter if someone off themselves. If if you know a rapper gets shot and killed, like somehow pussy is always the, yeah. the fundamental reason why shit happens. Yeah, and the thing is, like, even that one, like, this is the only time I'm gonna like kind of sympathize with him because, like, there were like all the memes were about like. You know, Chris Paul's wife, you know, waiting for his ass to come home and all this stuff. And like, dude, I get that. Like, out of nowhere, you just kind of like fucked up this dude's like house, right? Yeah. But if you cheated on, like, if you like fucked my wife while I was married to her, I don't give a fuck about your situation, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's no, odd. I'm ruining your life too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like the only time I was like, you know what? I'm not even mad at Cotty, bro, because yeah. this shit seems left. But like, bro, if he had that on his chest and like that guy ruined my home, yo, fuck that guy. Oh, bro. no. So that, I fully agree with what he did. I don't, yeah, some people were like, no, why would you do that to that man? Like, if he did indeed fuck him while he's married, I don't give a fuck. I'm just posting your ass yeah. once a day for like a month. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I, like again, like I know, like it, like two wrongs will make a right, whatever the fuck that saying is. But like, man, if I go, you know, if my house is ruined because of uh -huh. you, bro, I'm not gonna be like, all right, bro, like I'm not gonna ruin this for you. Like, no, it's, right. it's, it's on, bro. I'll burn no, this I don't shit give down, a dude. fuck. Two wrongs, I'll make plenty of more wrongs. Like we're just gonna <laughs> only do wrongs from now on. Fuck a right. <laughs> oh, dude. But the beams were yeah. That was that. Those beams were amazing, bro. Like, dude, he has to be. Dude, that's the thing. I can see him in his house with like 10 people who he fucks with and like know the truth of what's happening. Cause like he knows he's about to get banned the moment it happens. 
And then, but he can just see all their phones blowing up about him. And he's yeah. like, yo, I'm the king of the world. And it's just like, right. oh, man, I guess, bro. Yeah. Also, it like, is exhausting. another reason why I wouldn't have sympathy is all these fucking high profile people. I don't understand how they do shit like this and think they're just going to get away with it. Like, you're literally, if he did, in fact, do this, you're fucking with one of the the most famous females on the planet. Right. Like you could, you have so much on the line. It's just insane to me that he would even go to that extent and think he would get away with it. Yeah, dude. But again, I'm not gonna name names. I, I saw a podcast on TikTok recently that she, like, she said some wild shit about a certain uh, athlete, and I was like, bro, that's you have like forty thousand views a week. Like, you can't just be saying this shit without, like, you know. Bro. Uh-huh. Um, but I would say, bro, only because I've been around, especially down here in Miami, like. Dude, these guys get away with so... They've been getting away with so much from such an early age. You know what I mean? Like, they mm-hmm. cheat on a school test, but it's like, ah, oh, bro, but you're the star athlete, so, like, it's all yeah, good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you fucking... They catch you with, like, weed True. in college, but it's like, ah, oh, bro, you're the fucking starting point guard. Like, you know what I mean? So I feel like at some point, even though we know these are grown-ass men who are raising children and making, like, millions of dollars, bro, like, at some point, that subconscious has to be, you know, present. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. like... I've always gotten away with it. So why wouldn't I get away right. with it? Right. And it's like, and I think it's not until you don't get away with it where like change happens. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, oh, bro, right. there's like real fucking consequences. But I really think like until that happens, you're like, bro, why wouldn't I get away with this? Like, we'll right. just, you know, like we'll just fucking like on the side and I'll meet you at a random hotel and like no one's ever going to know. Like, who cares? Yeah. Like, but. And I think these, these women should also not be so naive and think, especially like a sports player. There's like an 80% chance that you're probably not going to be the only one. This guy's traveling everywhere. Yeah. Women are throwing themselves at him. It's not saying it's right, but let's be realistic here. Like if, if you're a star athlete and you guys are fucking dating at starting age 20 or whatever it is, 23, this dude is going to be going ham. And yeah, it takes a different kind of, it almost feels like the woman is like, you have to already like accept it going in. It's yeah. like, bro, like I'm gonna be his... taken care of, or what? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be taken care of. I'm, I'm gonna end, like I'm gonna have him to the last, my last day on this earth. My kids are gonna be set for life. My grandkids are set for life. It's almost like, you know, it's just like, again, dude, I feel like we fucking sound like like fucking fresh and fit right now. Like, I know. Not doing that. <laughs> but it's that. I mean, that's I. I agree with some of the things they say, and I, I agree with that one because I'm like a man who has just millions upon millions particularly a famous one i'm not talking about like ceo of some fucking random startup even though it's probably similar oh like patagonia about, like, guy like down the street like yeah. finance pros yeah, yeah like dudes in the limelight who can't go to a club without fucking a hundred women like surrounding their table yeah dude like even like remember like uh i think when i first got on tiktok like um the uh the girl who had a boyfriend but had the opportunity to kiss Bad Buddy and like filmed it. Yeah. And it was like, bro, what are you? And then right. like, there's just like the boyfriend, just like, oh, okay, like, I, I, it is what it is. You know what I mean? So imagine that times like a trillion. You know what I mean? With these guys like just out. Yeah, no, I, I feel you, bro. I feel you. Yeah. Like, girls are ready to risk it all just to even have like a glimmer of being a part of that lifestyle. So, um, yeah. pretty wild, bro. But again, let's, let's just see how, I mean, it's just alarming and like scary to see to even think how this is gonna play out because even when you think he's like fully censored, he's not, bro. Like he just keeps appearing and just saying other shit. So like yeah. it's almost like an exciting show to watch, but it also like exciting, like terrifying. Like I know, like again, yeah, I know I'm not trying to repeat other people's content, but I know like Charlemagne said some shit like three weeks. So like, dude, like this seems like it's gonna end very badly for him. You know what I mean? And like. Like, I, I hope I never wish that upon anyone, but it's almost like confusing. It's like, bro, like, is like, what's your comeback story here? Like, yeah. like, do you really just want to like disappear and be free? Cause I feel like that's like been his like buzzword the last like three weeks. Like I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm like, bro, you've been free. You're a fucking yeah. billionaire in America living your, but like you've been free. Like, what are you talking about? So, yeah. Um, so yeah, just very, it's, it's exciting, but also confusing to fi- try to figure out, like, how does this, like, turn around for him at some point? Yeah, no, I agree. It's definitely entertaining. I'm on- Someone asked me about this the other day. I'm honestly not too sure where this will end up or how to feel about it right now. I'm just kind of 
it's like a waiting game for me, I guess. It's a, Curious yeah, who's it's, gonna it's associate very, with him. It's a waiting game. It's a yeah. waiting game. Because <laughs> I haven't really seen too many high profile artists uh like publicly endorse and associate with him so i'm curious if he's Bro, if, a song with if somebody. you go through the likes like, on his instagram post yeah. you can figure out who this is. right but now i'm like sometimes i i, I feel like likes can be kind of empty too though because sometimes it's just like oh i acknowledge this post this is interesting but it doesn't necessarily mean you agree with what he's saying um if you, know, if you put fire emojis in praying yeah, yeah, hands fair, and fair. Shit, like if you're then, commenting yeah. on it like yo thank you bro we missed your voice kind of a shit i feel yeah. you but I also think like the dude only has like three posts up. So like people are going to see if you like that shit. So, yeah. cause even on TikTok, bro, I'm even like very like aware, like I may like kind of like something, but I'm like, bro, I don't want to like this and start getting like more of this on my feet. So mm -hmm. like, I don't know, I feel like, again, I saw a couple people's names. I was like, oh really? Interesting. Yeah. You support this. <laughs> well, well, I mean, if he's paying them too, shit, if, he, yeah, if yeah, he's paying the me, I'm liking every post. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the emojis um i bet let's move on to some other crazy news that uh i never thought dude, speaking of like not knowing how it's gonna turn out dude i thought we'll never get here bro it's been two and a half years right crazy. dude yeah. yes two and a mm -hmm. half years since the taylor i'm oh, sorry tory lanes and megan the stallion situation and we're finally in court right i think yesterday was the first day of court Yes, I believe uh, the fifth. So two days ago. Two days ago, we're recording this on December seventh. So, no. bro. So his last tweet was like, you know, doubling down on like, yo, you'll see, you know, you're gonna find out that I was always right, blah blah blah. The the now there's apparently a third charge against him that's coming through, and then I think the main detective who took Megan's statement is mm -hmm. like unable to like go to court now because they they're ruling out his statement or some shit because there was that, like old... and i believe he has a domestic violence case uh against him as well that um, specific uh detective yeah which is bro. wild messy which adds bro. so much to this case we're messy and we're 48 hours in so mm -hmm. just that we're finally here i guess because again we're not going to really find out that any that much until the shit's over um, dude, but what I didn't, uh, to go to you a second, but what I didn't realize in the report, like in her statement, cause I know she made a comment on TV about like, he said to her dance, bitch, dance and started shooting, but yo, that's in the fucking police report. Yeah. 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 It's in the, that's apparently she crazy. told the, 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 uh, police officer that. That's crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. Like if that's true, bro, <laughs> that's, Why? bro, next level. That, yeah. They mentioned that before, but I think like no one really necessarily took it seriously. It. Yeah, because yeah. we thought it was just like hearsay or whatever, but it's in the report. So clearly she's saying it. He actually said that. Yeah. And then I think Kylie and Corey might be brought in as well as witnesses because they're saying that all this started at their at Kylie's house and then led to like the four. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Bro, so much to take in in for like 48 hours. But if you had a just like from what you know now, and now that we're finally here two and a half years later, you know, not which way you're leaning, how do you think this is going to like end? Like, how do you yeah. think this ends? Um, I mean, I think someone's definitely going to be penalized in some way. Uh, my gut says whoever let off the shots, uh, it was accidental. Okay. Um, considering I don't think whoever shot it was particularly far away from Megan. I feel like if they wanted to do harm, they could have easily done it based on them all being in the car or whatever, or at mm -hmm. least near the car. Um, but as far as what happens, I, I feel like, I mean, I, I honestly don't know very much about the legal system, but, but I quick, could so see- not, But only because you mentioned this before, but even just having a gun in LA is like a crazy offense, right? Or you could have like a concealed weapon in, in uh, California. I don't think it's as bad as New York. Um, you definitely need a permit in order to carry a concealed weapon. So even though my firearm, for instance, is registered, I can't just walk on the street with it. Um, okay. I would okay. definitely face the consequences for that. So um, if it turns out he didn't even shoot, but like it was his gun and unregistered and uh, you know, he's just walking around with it. I guess potentially that could bite him in the ass. 
So if he does get charged, I think it would be something along the lines of that, not necessarily him trying to inflict harm on uh, Megan the Stallion. Yeah, that's what I think. It's like honestly, I was leaning that way too, bro. I feel like it's gonna be like they're gonna hit him for like a gun charge Mm -hmm. that is like house arrest. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I can't, bro. Like I just feel I, I I cannot fathom that the U.S. court system is going to let a man be free for two and a half years with whatever evidence they have if he really was trying to do harm to this woman. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I just can't, bro. Like, I just feel like people get locked up for way less, uh, for way longer. So if I had to, and again, I just think, and also there's just like, dude, she's very powerful, bro. Like the brain behind her is, dude, she was on fucking Forbes, what, 30 under 30 kind of like list. Mm-hmm. I was like, bro, who's, no one's listening to her. Like, like, at this point, she's just like famous because she like she's a Kardashian at this point. Yeah, like yeah. you're just famous, bro. Like you don't like you're not what power do you have besides like the like you're just almost like too big to fail. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, but we have to keep her propped up as the number one female hip hop artist. It's like, bro, like people in hip hop are even really fucking peeping for you right now. So like, yeah. But I just yeah. can't, yeah. It might see your point. I, I just can't see him doing real jail. Like, I don't see him doing any jail time, bro. Like yeah. house arrest. And I think she won't even have to come out and say anything as far as like, oh, I made it up or I was drunk and I, I, you know, misremembered the situation or whatever. Like, Mm -hmm. I think it's going to end up being like a bullshit ass fucking court hearing that like, dude, we already knew this kind of a thing. Yeah. And and I'm kind of, you know, just basing this off of Tori's attitude to this whole thing. It seemed like he was just in the the brightest of spirits these past couple years um obviously it could be you know a mental tactic it be, to it like it not go be, crazy or some shit correct for it the could case. be entire bullshit like he could mm-hmm. be fucking panicking with every fucking tweet and just like let right. me come all fucking positive but also bro like i'm gonna put the benefit imagine like having a, a entire um law like thought based off a lyric from a song but I'm just banking on like I don't trust I trust Drake too much to not be like he didn't shoot that bitch. You know what I mean? Like uh-huh. I just trust him way too much to not like you know maybe not get involved. But for you to come out yeah. with that statement, I feel like he's like, bro, trust me, it never happened. Kind of. No, I think that's valid because I mean someone even said the same thing about uh, I think Kim Kardashian tweeted hashtag oh, free Gunna? Gunna. And someone was like, her brand is too massive for her to to just like loosely say some shit if he could put potentially was guilty for, I don't know, uh, being an accomplice in a murder or some shit. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, like, dude, Drake's not trying to co-sign the guy who shot a woman, in the, a black woman in the foot, bro. There's no fucking way, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, that's a good. It's crazy to put all your stake on that. But I'm like, bro, like, it also, like, why would he do that? You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see, man. I hope it's like a drawn out thing. It's like a year from now, we're still like kind of in the same boat. Like we know nothing. Yeah. He's not in jail, but she's not also being in trouble by anything. So uh, honestly, even for like their own peace of mind, bro. Cause I mean, I feel like her name gets dog every day because of this cork. I, f- I feel like even she wants this shit just to go away. Right. And I, I want it to go away too, or at least to figure this shit out so there can stop being this kind of like divide between, you know, supporting and trusting what black women say and do versus you know the toxic masculinity of you know male hip-hop or whatever i just want to get to the bottom of it if tori actually did it and we find out that shit like great we can all like apologize and be like oh my god you know she was right all along but i think it's just uh insane how it seems like tori was demonized but like everyone who's aligned with him has so much to lose yeah that they're aligning with him so i'm like clearly he must know something that he's just not allowed to say yet oh for sure dude. that's like tampering like it's because right. i feel like the, yeah you can't he can't come out and say anything specific mm-hmm. but yeah and it's also like do like for also for like i want it to be over with for the simple fact of like man like i don't like it's also toxic for like the, the the normal fans of music, bro. Like I feel mm-hmm. uncomfortable posting like a video with like Tori's music in the background. Like I don't want to get the vengeance of every female in my timeline. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it's like, bro, I can be a Tory fan. Like and I don't want to get into it. Like he didn't shoot her. She's a yeah. fucking liar. You know what I mean? I just want to post right. my fucking song and move on with my day. 
Exactly. Yeah, same. And I, I hope he's innocent as well, like selfishly, so that, you know, he can get the exposure like musically that he deserves and work with people openly. Cause I think right now people who probably want to work with them, who yeah. maybe don't, who have, who aren't like as big as Drake are still kind of afraid to even take that leap. Yeah. So. Cause you're thinking about it, the only big names really is just Chris Brown and Drake. Mm -hmm. And it's like, bro, they're both, I mean, one is still considered toxic, but it's yeah. also too big to fail. And then dude, you're not, you're not saying anything to Drake. So mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting, bro. Dude, side note, what were your thoughts on like um the American music? Was it, was the, was it the AMAs that didn't I believe let, so that didn't let Chris Brown perform? I thought that was ridiculous. I'm like, haven't we moved past this shit? It's been what, like 15 years or something? I don't even right. know. But a long ass time. He already serves time. There's fucking a thousand interviews, apologies. I think Rihanna like publicly forgave him. I'm like, let's just move on. They're both alive and they're both insanely successful. Clearly they, there's no animosity between them that I know of. So why can't we just move on? Like you want the man dead? Like what's the solution at this yeah, point? Yeah, what's the solution here? And then also like, don't invite him in the first place. <laughs> like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, like, dude, like, yeah, that was, dude, I, I was more like, yo, how are we still talking about this? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because, bro, like, Chris Brown's on every platform doing all, like, dude, like, I feel like, I thought Chris Brown was taken in by, like, the public ages ago. So, right. like, dude, I was more like, are you, we're, how are we still doing this? So, like, mm -hmm. that was crazy to me, bro. That was crazy. Because also, like, think about, like, dude, wasn't he, like, 19 when that shit went down? Or, like, I think 17? so. And then I think they, he, they both, like, admitted that she had hit him before he hit her not to say that's a good no, 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 for sure like you so but yeah like those are two drunk teenage kids bro like right and it's wild to me there's literally parents out there who like forgive their child's killer but we can't forgive you know this stupid incident of two teens who like got out of control but it's almost feel like dude we did because bro after that incident he was performing at the MT like mtv movie like music awards with Jay-Z and Rihanna in the stands, like, clapping for him. Yeah. So I feel like, how do we move on, but then come back? Is like, that's the Back thing. in like, that, like, cancel like, era. That's, it, dude, that's what it has to be, because I feel like we're going back and, like, giving people, like, speeding tickets for, like, shit that happened, like, four right. years ago. It's like, bro, like, <laughs> I already paid that fine. Like, right. what are we going back to? It's just like that, what is he, like the NFL commissioner or some shit? They found some old ass photo of him, like at some racist rally in like 19 fucking 50 oh, yeah, 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 or yeah. something. And there, and not to, you know, I'm sure he's he might still be racist now, but at the same time, it's like, what, why are we going back to that now? We know like every white person who's like 70 plus right now probably did some racist shit. So why yeah. are we really that surprised? Yeah, so, but did you see, like, LeBron's comment on that? No, I did not. What did he say? Okay, so I'll give you the full story real quick before we move on to the, the last topic. So, LeBron James is, like, um, they, dude, when he talks about everything, bro, everything, everything, when it comes to, like, post-game interviews, right? And they really dug deep on him with the whole Kyrie Irving thing about, like, the Jews and the Black Jews and all that stuff. So, he asked the media in the room, hey, how come no, you guys ask me about everything here. How come no one's asking me how I feel about Jerry Jones, which is, he's, he's the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, how come you're not asking me about Jerry Jones at that rally when he was like 17 years old? And he's like, how come you're not having that same energy? And I love Jerry Jones. Like he's saying that I love Jerry Jones. I don't think he's a racist today. But how come you're not asking that question, right? How come we only picking and choosing when we're offended, when like it's the black guy doing the offense and it's not the white guy doing the offense? So like, yeah. I kind of get is what he's saying. I think like LeBron is corny as fuck, like most times, <laughs> like to be honest, like I just like think he's like, I don't think it's his fault. I think since he's like, like a try hard. Not like a try hard, but dude, ever since he was 13, he had to be like perfect. And I don't think he just was able to like form like normal, like, norms to be perfectly honest like he's just like too forced everything uh -huh. but with this point i was like kind of makes sense bro they're asking you about like the fucking color of the sky every day why wouldn't they ask you about you know this incident that like involves a team you support back in the day so right that that, that part to be kind of makes sense yeah yeah i get that and I, it wasn't even like um something that i necessarily thought had to be drawn out but it, it, I, you know, it's just interesting how 
certain things are just publicly available at all times and, and for some reason out of the blue 15 years later someone yeah just, it just goes viral because you know someone happened to post it at the right time at in the right place and then all of a sudden we hate that person for a couple months or don't let them do xyz and then it blows over i mean fortunately i think like a lot of times it, it never does permanent da damage to people who don't deserve it but still there's always that toxic as long as we have digital platforms where, where random people can voice their opinion, I think it's going to continue to... to it's going to, yeah, I don't see how can cancel culture ends unless, like, the people, like, the brands don't cancel you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if Adidas were to, like, Adidas, whoever, like, were to let go, Kanye, do whatever the fuck you want, bro. Like, yeah, as long as you're not killing anyone, bro, like, dude, say whatever the fuck you want. If you did some shit 20 years ago, it is what it is. At the end of the day, like, I feel like... The reason why I think we both agree we hate cancel culture is like, bro, you're you're expecting everyone to be perfect. And mm -hmm. they were perfect before, they have to be perfect now, and they have to be perfect in the future. It's like, bro, how is that possible, bro? Like, yeah. dude, I read some, dude, you wouldn't, yo, I just saw this, bro, so I have to, like, I'll take it out. I look at my Facebook memories from time to time, like, about, show, about my mom, uh -huh. and bro, look at what my fucking memory was from... Hold on, dude. This is hysterical. I looked at, I read this shit. I was like, bro, you a wild kid in college, bro. I was 19 years old. <laughs> and my Facebook post from December 7th, 2007, this was the day before uh, I was a big, I'm, I'm a big Mayweather fan. He was fighting Ricky Hatton for like the, the belt, right? Uh -huh. Bro, I posted as a 19 year old, uh, Daniel Abar is wondering if Ricky Hatton is willing to die Saturday night. Pretty boy Floyd gonna whoop that ass. You know what I mean? Like, like the most randomest but aggressive and could be offensive like tweet or whatever. Yeah. It's just like, bro, like, how are you judging me of shit? I, I, thirty-three year old me wouldn't do that shit. So like, how mm -hmm. are we like really holding me or holding people to a standard of like, I, I feel like Chris Brown on the lie detector test, like, yeah, dude, thirty-four year old me would never put hands on Rihanna, but. Mm -hmm. 17 year old me drunk and with all the money in the world and no discipline yeah dude i fucked up but we yeah. worked it out like how are you still mad at me about this that's like the, it's just like the expectation is just far too high right yeah i mean based on the facebook memory thing too like i've seen so many memories where i'm like that person is not me like <laughs> i must that that shit must have been created by AI and just I just believe it or something because there's no way I talk that way or would say that crazy shit and it's crazier too because you're you're broadcasting it not like even a comment and a response to someone it's just like how you're feeling like your status yeah. you're like fuck it all 500 <laughs> of my friends need to hear this crazy shit from me today and, and really it's your family it's your auntie right. and your grandma like what's happening <laughs> yeah. no I had to go back and delete some because I'm like if if anyone ever found this shit they would be accusing me of being all kinds of shit and i was Yo, like same it dude. was just a joke though but you know that's not how people view things they they take it way too seriously dude but for me i've also realized that you know, i've been simping for 15 years bro because some of the fucking messages i would post about like girls i, I was like bro what were you doing bro people uh -huh. can see this shit but all right it is what it is bro people, people i think the expectation is just far too high on like trying to be perfect but it is what it is but shout out to uh both tori and megan uh again hopefully this both gets resolved and they can both move on with their lives and it doesn't involve any of them being behind bars but uh real yeah. quick um we wanted to, i wanted to touch base on this and uh talk it out with uh with blair that you see a lot of like freshman uh double xl um commentary over the past couple months um so i'm gonna do this 2022 by 2023 let's look back 10 years and just figure out you know where these artists are now do they live up to the hype um because do they even still do double xl freshman list they do but it, over the years it's just become less and less uh i guess, I guess respected no one's buying magazines a, like no one yeah really no one's a, buying magazines and then the, the caliber of artists they select just become less and less impressive over the years so no one really takes it as seriously as as they used to agree so that's why i thought it was even better for it for those reasons that do um to do a look back especially do the 2011 one included like meek mill uh oh that kendrick was Lamar, wild ways i think and no that was meek oh. mill kendrick and mac miller were oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. were the top and yay wolf was also part of that yellow wolf yellow wolf sorry yeah so yeah. like those four in itself so 
it was intriguing to see like the the following year, which is this list that we have now, because like I was like, dude, did they reach for this? Because I feel like even when they were making the 2011 list, you knew those guys were stars. So like, yeah, if you need to top it, how do you top it the following year? So let's uh, let's go through the list real quick and we can jump into the individual names. Um, so first one, Future. All right. Kid Inc., Danny Brown, French Montana, Roscoe Dash, who you and I had a fucking full deep dive when I was over there, uh, Mac Lamore, Don Tripp, Machine Gun Kelly, Hobson, and Iggy Azalea. So on the surface, bro, looking back 10 years, pretty impressive fucking list. Yeah, no, this list is like spot on as far as I guess scoping out who the superstars in their own right would be because pretty much everyone here is still relevant in some way today Uh, mostly musically obviously but like they have different fan bases but for different reasons as far as what they bring to the table musically correct so I would say one and you could jump into one that made sense like or you're confused about now or impressed by today so for me I would say, because I remember um, 2012 vividly as far as, like, my love for French Montana. Like, I was like, bro, this Arab dude from the Bronx, bro, these beats are crazy that he's picking. Everything seems like a fucking hood anthem. The mixtapes were fire. But, bro, if you would have told me that guy would be a multi-millionaire 10 years later, had have Grammy Awards, have one of the biggest songs with uh, Unforgettable, well, Unforgettable mm-hmm. with Sway Lee. Yep. Dude, shout out to Sway Lee though, bro. Unforgettable and like Sunflower. Dude, you could, yeah. yo, he could re- never make a song again with those two <laughs> songs, bro. That's Facts. insane. Yep. But if you would, I would never, I never saw that for French Montana. So again, we both said to do like his last two albums have been like whatever, but bro, still the, the catalog and the career and the impact is wild. So I think they probably overachieve with French Montana because there's no way making this list. You're like, yo, this guy's going to be this in a decade. Yeah, for sure. And I think the first time I heard of him, uh, maybe towards the end of college or something, but he had a song, I think, called New York Minute. Um, and it had a very classic New York feel to it. Uh, I was impressed by it, but it didn't scream to me oh, this is a superstar of right. some sort who's going to be around for decades or or whatever. I thought he was just going to be a cool New York dude who blends into the scene, is mo- mainly popular in New York or by like hip hop heads and it kind of stops there. I didn't expect right. him to evolve to like this mogul level. Glo- and globally. Because yeah, when globally. I first heard, I'm like, yo, you're going to be local, but you're going to be the shit in New York. And I'm like, mm-hmm. wow, this guy... To think he came out 10 years ago and it's still relevant. You know, he's relevant, you know, in a yeah. hip-hop sense. But the impact he's had in over the last 10 years is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, I wanted to jump into this because, like, I was I was surprised that there was more hits than expected. So, Kid Ink. So, when you think of Kid Ink over the last decade, like, what comes to mind? Yeah, uh, so, for me, I, I was actually, like, he was one of my favorite artists, um, I think... This might have been 2000, like 10 or 2011, actually. Um, I think it was before he like linked up with Chris Brown and released fucking 50 hits in a row. Yo, they have uh, so many songs together, bro. Yeah. He had a, a couple mixtapes that I came across. And I think around this time, like, I mean, Drake was already hot. But like to me, Kid Ink was like the other melodic rapper that made music of a similar vibe. Um and yeah, I was really into his music and then he came out and then did all the stuff with Chris Brown. But I, I think he just, he obviously blew up to, to uh, a huge level, but I think overall his music was just too cookie cutter to really create, um, you know, a core fan base that was like, mm. I'm going out to all the shows and fucking with him and waiting for new releases and stuff. I, I know he's still like in the scenes. Yeah, know, I think he actually just dropped a couple stuff. songs with, uh, with Wiz. Yeah. No, he's still producing um, music and pumping it out. It all sounds great, but I think he he never uh, expanded out into other areas musically or even business wise. Maybe as far as Do I can you, tell. But then going back to you, when you heard him those first couple of years with all those hits, what were you thinking the 
the end result was going to be? Honestly, I, I I didn't really foresee much beyond that outside of, you know, maybe he'll continue working with Chris or okay. put out similar hits. But in the back of my head, I was like, he, he can't just keep doing songs of this vibe because the DJ Mustard beats mm. sounded identical over time. So I'm like, eventually people are going to get sick of these beats. I, I don't know if you sent me a TikTok or I saw it, but someone made a, a joke about how, you know, during that era, DJ Mustard Beats like sounded completely the same. Really? Yeah, it wasn't me, but that's, that's funny. Yeah. That's, so that's kind of how I felt about it. I was like, I don't know, like there's gotta be something where it evolves. Yeah, and I think the the, the, the comment you made about like cooker cuttery, like cookie cuttery, sorry, Could, like it's, uh, that, that makes perfect sense to me because I forgot that he his so his his song that peaked the most on the Billboard charts was the song that he's fe featured on with Fifth Harmony and like uh, worth it like oh yeah, that I'm one yeah, yeah yeah bro that is like the most like yo know, generic hip hop pop song ever created bro and I'm mm -hmm. like oh that would be him because that really yeah, yeah. was like the sound he was going for yeah but then um. Dude, I forgot about that song he has with, uh, D, uh, was it Dead Loaf? Uh, Be Real? Oh, yeah, yeah, Be Real. Bro, so even, like, that was a banger. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, that was, dude, 20 weeks on the charts, uh, peaking at 43. Dude, so yeah. he, had a, he had a few songs, man. But I think, to your point, it just, like, it kind of, like, what makes you different than, like, I don't know, bro. I'm, I'm showing my age here, but, like, when Memphis Bleak does a generic hip hop pop song. You know what I mean? It's just like, these two songs stand out, but it's just yeah. like, the majority of the catalog was just like very like yeah. redundant and like, yeah, again, like it's just the same. It's like Flo Rida uh, ish. Um, right. Oh, dude, for sure. Yeah. It's like not like, bad. It's like music. the LA Flo Rida. Like he's just right. like, yeah. But I think it's, I think at least from a hip hop standpoint, uh, you want, you want to hear the story of the individual and like their perspective on things. And if your raps are super commercial and could anyone could essentially rap it and, and have it make sense, then I think it's hard to create a fan base because you don't have much to latch onto other than the music sounds good. Correct. Like, yeah, like exactly. Exactly. Nothing else needs to be added. That's a, a great point. Um, so another one here. Um, I guess it's just talk about like the fucking like the weight of this alone. So looking at future, do Godfather mm -hmm. of trap music. I mean, is that fair to say like right now? Like that's just like I'd say so for sure. Yeah, like, dude, everybody I, I'm telling nowadays. you, the first time I heard Future in 2012, there's no way I'm thinking this mumble rap Same. dude's gonna win Grammys for best right. writer and all this shit. So Same. Bro, speaking of overachieving. Um, so I guess for Sorry, you did, one quick note too is I think during that time too. I recall seeing a video or something of T-Pain basically calling him out and saying that Future doesn't know how to use auto-tune properly. Oh, wow. So I'm like, not only did I not think he would blow up to this level, but you know, yeah, people saying he doesn't know how to use auto-tune or whatever, but now every new rapper's like, yeah, Future is my idol. Roddy Rich, Juice World, everybody. Everybody, bro. Like, dude, he came in 10 years ago and literally, like, runs shit now, which is... Dude, and again, I love Future, bro, but mm. I definitely did not envision that. Honestly, my when I first, I remember someone made like a funny, like animated, like internet video about him in the booth making fun of him, and it was just like the producer, like, "Yo, he's trying to sound like Two Chains, bro. We don't need another Two Chains." And like, <laughs> and it's just like, bro, like, again, he's not gonna say this shit on, on on camera, but I think if you pull Two Chains aside and you ask him, "Yo, whose crew would you want, yours or Future's?" He's taking Future's, bro. Like. Mm -hmm. If you're being honest, like obviously everyone loves their life and everyone has different goals, but bro, like if I could swap careers with someone and I'm two chains, yeah, I'm taking Future's career. Bro. Yeah, same. Uh, who do you think is the biggest disappointment on this list? Probably Iggy Azalea. Um, I, I can't say I, I was ever a fan of her music, really, but I think she, the industry, spoon fed the shit out of her to everyone and she had hits and ti was on every interview backing her because i think he signed her he signed and her, i was yeah. just like there's no way she's gonna disappear and like just straight up not really make music um and it's just crazy to me to see her kind of go this like more influencer like like internet model route 
yeah um, as opposed to producing music because i i didn't really expect that i'm like she has too many hits to disappear so rapidly it's like she was on the scene then they made fun of her with that like weird freestyle on stage and then she just disappeared like a week later yo that was cancel culture just starting bro because that was wild like it's like yo yeah that shit went viral and it was she was out of here um but dude i agree with all that bro it was that if you would have told me iggy because dude she already i know she was on the freshman list like on this on this on this magazine but bro she was already popular in australia so like if you really kind of knew her for like four or five years before that so you're thinking like oh fuck now america fucks with you bro you're about to you're you're tall blonde body's crazy and your raps aren't your songs aren't terrible bro you're about mm -hmm. to destroy this shit so honestly like when I first saw this, if I would have first seen this list back in 2012, I'm thinking she's going to be the biggest one 10 years later. There's mm -hmm. no way Iggy Azalea is not the biggest fucking artist in 2022. Yeah, no, that's a, a great take. I, I probably would have assumed the same as well, um, especially because, I mean, let's be real, like she's a, a white artist um, who tapped into the hip hop scene. And we all know like, once that happens and you have a few hits under your belt, it's really easy easy to market yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but I think she, personally, I think she played too into the like, like ghetto white girl image or whatever. I think mm. people are accusing of her of having a black scent and like just trying too hard. And I think that kind of fucked with, uh, I guess, her reputation within yeah. the hip hop scene because she should have probably been marketed more pop. If she's yeah. gonna get some maintain that success, I guess. That's fair. Yeah, because even after a while, we're like, bro, who are you even trying to be right now? You know, like, mm -hmm. do you even know? Kind of a thing. Like, what what are we trying to get? That's fair. Yeah. Um, so I guess like the probably like the biggest controversy of this whole list, because again, literally, like I think about like NFL or sports drafts, like, bro, like if you have 10 picks, you know, you're not gonna get everyone right, right? Like, so like I would even say, like, obviously the the, the ones that stand out are like pops in. And Don Tripp, bro, most people listen to this podcast have no idea who the fuck that is, bro. And that's okay, bro. Like, in 2012, they had apparently a couple of mixed tapes that were banging, and you're just going to add it to the list. Like, these these are all not meant to be a 10 out of 10. But what I would say is, dude, the the ones that, like, are crazy to me, Roscoe Dash, from, like, a, a culture perspective, bro, he was so beloved from, like, 2012 mm -hmm. to 2015, really. Yeah. For him to not even be remotely relevant in music just hurts me. Like, am I shocked? Yeah. Maybe not shocked. But, like, damn, bro. Like, we really, like, yo, fucked with him when he was out here making music. And it just sucks that he's not really mm -hmm. around like that making music and stuff. Right. Yeah, you showed me that. at least that's a that... level that we're used to, at least. Right. And you showed me that one song when you uh, flew to SF. I forget the name of it. Like, Wiz was on it. Oh, dude, um, Wiz, Fab, dude, Fab, Kevin yeah. Hart was in the video. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, this dude was killing it, man. Marvin like, Gaye and Chardonnay, like, just in the uh, no hands. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he's just the the focal point of all these hits, too. Like, you waited for the hook. And, like, something about the way he, like, layered his vocals or something just made the song full and fun. And he just seemed like a... a good energy and then again to have him just disappear off the scene seems odd especially because i feel like he his melodic style just fits very well in the current sound so i'm yeah. not too sure uh what he's up to now but hopefully he makes a comeback of some sort yeah or maybe he's writing for other people because he also gave yeah, me like true. that that uh was it jeremiah like vibe like maybe he's like more behind the scene guy and like mm -hmm. not really a, a, like a friendly camera guy so we'll see um, and then I guess another one that I wanted to touch upon before we get out of here, bro, the, uh, dude, Macklemore, right? So again, if you would have told me when they made this list that Macklemore is going to be the only one, this list with the best rap album Grammy in his hands, I was like, you're crazy, right? Yeah. But honestly, I think that was the worst thing that ever happened to him because I truly think, cause bro, we'll, we'll say whatever you want to say, bro, we were bumping his shit. Like, we can say he's corny or whatever, but, bro, his songs, we enjoyed. Mm -hmm. But I think him being the, now you win that award and you're the face of hip-hop, I think the whole culture was like, no, 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 bro. We like you way too much. Get the fuck out of here. Because I really think, bro, if he was just nominated, bro, and lost to someone else, 
I think he's still making music. I think he became uncomfortable, like, oh, fuck, bro. Like, I'm too big. Like, I don't mm-hmm. even know what to do with this pressure. I don't know. What are your thoughts on, like, right. on him in general? No, I, I agree with that. I think, and it's interesting. I want to get into even Machine Gun Kelly, because I feel like whiteness is very interesting within hip hop and like projecting the success of the artist. I think with Macklemore, like his music was very, I guess, good hearted, kind hearted and, and had a positive message and everything like that. Yeah, to your like point that. about Iggy, not to cut you off, but like it wasn't, he wasn't trying to be some, he wasn't trying to right. sound black. Like, right. dude, it was like, it was just a white boy, like mm-hmm. enjoying hip hop and making good music. Right. But I think it was it was almost like too far left. It was like too apologetic and mm. apologetic and woke, like before woke was even really a thing. And I think sure there's like the the anti-traditional hip hop people who are you know, like I'm sure like middle-aged moms and shit, you know, would bump Macklemore because it was like the friendly, safe, positive hip hop that that uh you know they could listen to but i don't think in the grand scheme of things hip-hop really gave a shit it was like more pop mm. but it was like the opposite of iggy who was like the try hard i um, hood yeah you know girl who should have been more pop and then uh machine gun kelly like he started off as like the the super hood dude who was doing the, the wild boy song and i heard him in interviews he's like since I'm white, like I can't really talk about hitting licks and all the crime and shit I did because people just won't believe me because I don't I look like a fucking rock star, like goth kid or whatever he was. Right, right, right. And now he fucking went that route and he's like bigger than fucking half the people on this list. So dude, to- I think dude, the, the white folks probably, have to find their lane. Besides future, bro, he probably might be the most relevant music wise. Mm-hmm. Like I would think Machine Gun Kelly's more relevant music, not hip hop wise, but music wise yeah. in French Montana right now. Oh yeah. Um, but it's because to your point, like he went against the shit that he said he was never gonna do. Like he's like, no, mm-hmm. he, he did become a rock star, which is fine. But if you would have told me that back then, I would have thought he's just saying in his hip hop lane, bro, he's done in like three or four years. Mm-hmm. But the fact that hey, good for him, bro. Like who gives a fuck? Like if he's enjoying making this music, like good for you. But right. I think that definitely prolonged his career. And, and, you know, he is what he is right now. Yeah, for sure. And I, I hate to talk about this dude for like the 50th time, but I think Jack Harlow is kind of the persona that you need in this day and age if you're going to like survive as the commercial mainstream artist that's just insanely successful. It's like the guy who doesn't take himself too seriously, but still can you know, hop on beats with like a Drake or future and do his thing and, and yeah. kind of blend in. Like you can't be on the extremes of I'm too nice and apologetic and woke. I'm also not too hood and, you know, a wannabe. I'm like in the middle and I just kind of fuck with everybody. Yeah, no, that's fair, dude. That's fair. Um, but dude, a pr- insane back to back list as far. And we could probably do some more deep dives in this throughout the rest of the year. Um, and go into next year, but to go from 2011 and then to come back on t- to 2012 with this list is pretty wild, bro. So, yeah. dude, if anything, we can do 2013 next week and just see, like, bro, like, th- dude, this is this was the reach. Yeah. <laughs> you know no, I mean? I'm like, down. No, let's keep it going. I, I think this is interesting to see where these people ended up. Yeah, for sure. But uh, all right, dude, we have a perfect heart out. We're out of here in a second. So, uh, my dude, let the people know where they can catch us. Get out of here. Yes, sir. Um, you can catch us at audio-theory.com. We got a new episode every single week, uh, except for holidays, of course. But you can get the merch. Check out the Spotify, Apple Music playlist. Um, I believe we're still kind of in the works of getting an interview going. Not going to rush anything, but you guys will get something from us uh, within the next sure. couple months, probably. Um, but outside of that, yeah, check us out on, on TikTok and YouTube shorts. Um, I think we want to make sure our hot takes get the visibility that they deserve. So um, we're switching up the content a little bit in that regard, but um, it's been doing well for us, going well for us so far. So excited about that. Yeah, and appreciate the engagement. And also in 2022, we got 20% growth on the uh, Spotify podcast. So even better, bro. So appreciate that. Appreciate everyone. I do appreciate you. Love you. Be safe. And uh, let me me know how you enjoyed the movie. For sure. Peace. Later, brother. Peace.